So I get on the internet Wednesday, and you can imagine my incredible shock and surprise when I find out that Titus O'Neil had been suspended for 90 days by the WWE. Not 30 days, not 60 days, 90 days. Taking his suspension well past WrestleMania and into the middle portion of May. I'm sitting there, what the blue is the blue fucks happen? I mean, they're suspending him for a quarter of the damn year. He had to do something really egregious and really bad and really freaking stupid. So as I read through more and I find out that apparently the suspension is related to the fact that he grabbed Vince's arm at the end of Raw on Monday night and Vince took exception to that and really didn't like that and we're suspending the dude for 90 days for it and in part the suspension apparently is Vince trying to send a message to the locker room about trying to get the guys to act more professional and act like adults. And they've now since apparently backed off a little bit and reduced the suspension to 60 days. But still, a 60-day suspension for grabbing Vince's arm. And just as I'm reading through this and I'm finding out different things, different reports and different rumors and different details, and I see what actually happened, I said, Jesus Christ, this whole thing is entirely stupid. Entirely stupid. And even now, the reaction to it in some part, I think, has gotten kind of stupid because it's went off in entirely different tangents. They may or may not even be related to the issue at hand. Now, first and foremost, let me tackle this from the Titus O'Neil perspective. You're a college-educated, almost 40-year-old man who is a father, you know, is known for his charitable works and the good things that he does, being a stand-up type of individual. Why in the fuck are you grabbing another grown man's arm? You're almost fade. You are a grown fucking man. And yeah, this is coming from me, the guy on the internet. Grow the fuck up. The hell are you doing grabbing Vince's arm? And on top of that, you're not just grabbing anybody's arm for some stupid, ridiculous fucking reason. You're grabbing the chairman of the board's arm, the CEO's arm. I mean, how dumb can you be? I understand a lot of people are outraged about this. In fact, he got suspended over something that was so trivial and so stupid. I get that. But I can tell you this much. In the real working world for me, if I grabbed my CEO's arm, I'd be immediately escorted to the fucking door and not be allowed to ever return. If this was in the real world, Titus O'Neil would be lucky to get suspended. More likely than not, he damn well could have gotten fired. And as childish and petty as it may seem, it was fucking stupid. What the hell are you doing? Knowing as well on top of that, that we're dealing with the WWE here. And you were a black man in the WWE. And you know a lot of times how the WWE in particular treats the black performers. And I've been very consistent in talking about this over the years. You know what type of situation and circumstance you were in. The last thing you need to do is draw any possible negative attention upon yourself that you can. So why the fuck would you go out of your way to do it? It makes no goddamn sense. Are you going to teach your kid to do the same damn thing? No, that's stupid. Times people do stupid things and make stupid decisions. And this was clearly a poor choice. This was clearly a lack of judgment. And Titus O'Neil was just being a fucking knucklehead. And what the hell are you doing? Who sits there and grabs their boss's arm like that? I guarantee if I go to work later today and I go grab my boss's, 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 boss's arm, I'm probably going to get shown the fucking door. Doesn't matter what manner it was done in. Doesn't matter what context. It doesn't fucking matter. You know, the fact that he got suspended, he frankly should be kind of lucky. In that sense, when we go equate it to the real world, he's lucky he didn't get damn fired. And again, especially... Knowing that you're already at a huge disadvantage in the WWE, being a black man. And when we talk about WWE's racist past, it's true, all of it, and so much more. It's one thing to be Hispanic or Latino in that company. It's one thing to be from the Middle East in that company. It's another thing to be a different ethnic group, even Asian, although they've been treated really, really poorly over the years. The group that gets treated as bad as anybody else are black performers, are black wrestlers. So why would you do anything to potentially put yourself or anybody else in your similar shoes in a potential bad light and into a worse situation at a time where they are at least featuring you on TV every week? In a good way? No, of course not, because it's a WWE. Why the fuck would we feature anybody, frankly, in a good way? But why in the fuck would you do that? You're almost 40 years old. 
have some goddamn sense. College educated man. This just teaches you once and for all that when somebody tries to throw their degree in your fucking face, that doesn't mean that they have any intelligence whatsoever when it comes to the real world. How stupid can you be? To be fair, he did go to an SEC school like Florida, so it's not like education really mattered all that much. Let's just put it out there. But this is dumb. It is stupid. But it's also dumb and stupid from the WWE standpoint. Somebody grabs Vince's arm and we're going to suspend him? If this isn't a company with some of the most fucked up priorities that I've ever seen, I don't know. So let me get this straight. We could have somebody repeatedly throw racist and prejudicial discriminatory remarks in the way of Alberto Del Rio. And then when he finally lashes out because he doesn't want to take it anymore and he shouldn't have to take it anymore... Instead of holding this asshole accountable, the social media guy, we fire ADR and we blame him and say that he was the one exhibiting pro unprofessional conduct. But the guy that made the racist taunts, we get rid of later for an entirely different reason. But we're going to suspend a guy for grabbing Vince's arm for 90 days and knowing damn good and well the pussies that run the WWE only backed it off down to 60 because they knew it was a ridiculous fucking overreaction to something incredibly childish and stupid. Furthermore, they didn't like some of the backlash that they got, and they knew it pointed, painted them in a bad light. And it was a bad light that they fucking merited and deserved in that fucking earned all these years. For all these people talking about it being racist, and it's because Titus O'Neil was black, and if John Cena grabs his arm, it wouldn't be the same thing. You know what, WWE, whether it applies in this case or it really doesn't, the fact of the matter is, you've made your own fucking bed, and you have to lie in it. Now, me personally, personally... If somebody says, well, John Cena, if he does that, he doesn't get suspended. And he surely doesn't get suspended for 90 days. Well, in theory, you're probably right. Is it just a race thing? Or is it the fact that he's not only white, but he's John Cena? Perhaps. But of all the things we could talk about with Cena, we would think that he would have enough sense to not grab Vince McMahon's arm in that time, in that manner, in that way to begin with. So to me, even then, it's kind of a flawed, bullshit type of logic. It really is. But it just, to me, speaks of the pussification of the WWE and the problem with the leadership within the WWE, at least as an outside observer looking in. Using this suspension as a way to set an example and to send a message to the rest of the locker room that they need to clean up their behavior and they need to act more professional. If you can't get these people that you're paying money to do a job to act professional... At some point in time, that stops being the employees, the grunt's fault. That becomes a fault of the leadership. That becomes a fault of the management. And take it from me, somebody who's been in charge of people in the past and had several bosses over the years as well. Those that sit there and always look for a way to send a message and set an example and use somebody as an example, they've already usually failed in their leadership. And all they're trying to do is overcompensate. And when you overcompensate, you create all types of problems and you open up Pandora's box to a whole shit storm that you weren't even prepared for. You know, at the end of the day, if you wanted to send a message to these guys to be more professional, then you made make it a more known thing that they're expected to act in a certain way. They're expected to be professional. That, having somebody like Titus O'Neil do that, that's a reflection on the direct leadership of WWE and just how lacking it is. Nothing more. It is a reflection of poor leadership in that company. Because you've got employees that think it's okay to do that on TV. And no longer becomes just the employee's fault. That becomes the boss's fault. And from a Vince McMahon standpoint, when did he become such a pussy? And I mean, I've talked about it for years. The pussification of Vince to me has been astounding. But we're talking about Vince McMahon with the billionaire bionic biceps. You know, the virile genetic jackhammer. And now he's going to sit there and do, this is how you know WWE is a corporation now. He's going to do the corporate bitch thing, do the HR fucking thing, and suspend the guy for this crap. The Vince McMahon, you know, 15, 20 years ago, would either A, turned around and cold cock Titus O'Neil on live television, or at least, if nothing else, waited until he got backstage, pulled Titus O'Neil up front, made everybody in the entire fucking backstage area gather around the gorilla position, and he would have pooned Titus O'Neil, and he would have destroyed Titus O'Neil verbally, and then moved the fuck on from it. You want to send a message? That should send a message enough. 
because now you're penalizing a guy for months. And what's even re more ridiculous about this to me, and I'm disappointed, not surprisingly, that more people don't talk about this, you can sit there and say racist things to employees, but the guy that's receiving all the racist treatment responds back in a physical manner, right or wrong, he did it, but he's the one that gets fired, the guy that makes the racist taunts, we don't have an issue with it. We keep him. If somebody decides they want to go out there and do some drugs, some HGH, some marijuana, and they drop hot, they get a 30-day suspension. So you're telling me, WWE, this is how stupid this whole situation is, that touching Vince McMahon's arm, grabbing Vince McMahon's arm, is worth two to three times the amount of suspension as a violation of the wellness policy. It speaks to how much of a joke your fucking wellness policy is, and it speaks to, again, the joke of your fucking leadership. It's stupid. For the people that want to go off on this thing being a racist thing, you know, again, when it comes to the race issues with WWE and their problem with racism, it is clearly documented. Don't believe me. Go fucking through this channel. Go through my history over the past five plus years. There's nobody that's been more on front of it, that's talked about it more, that's hammered it home more, to the point where some people that even believe in it start to get tired of me talking about it all the time. But in this particular case, to me, it's more of a reflection of the stupidity of the performer and the stupidity of the WWE and the environment that it cultivates and the lack of leadership within you know, if it's a white guy that grabs his arm like that, you know, let's say, when we say, well, if John Cena did it, you're also having to compare Titus O'Neil to the guy that's at the top of the company. You get what I'm saying? If it was, let's say, Big E or Xavier Woods or Kofi Kingston that did it, might they have fined him? Might they have had him job out a week or two on television? Perhaps. Part of it is, in part, related to the position on the car. And Titus O'Neil ended up being served as a sacrificial lamb and a bit of a guinea pig here. But it's fucking ridiculous. Grabbing hit your arm is worth losing a WrestleMania payday over? I mean, come on, man. The racist thing, like I said, WWE's made their own bed. They've lied in it. And they need to lie in it. And the more vigorously they deny it, to me, only validates even more how much of an issue it's become. And the fact that WWE even has to respond to it speaks to how poor their history has been over the years. And I feel absolutely no fucking sympathy for them. So anybody and everybody that wants to make this a race issue, have fucking at it. Because frankly, WWE fucking deserves it. Unfortunately for you, in this particular case, I am not going to jump on the bandwagon. I'm going to emphasize instead the pussification of the WWE, the corporatization of the WWE, the pussification of Vince McMahon, and the lack of leadership within, and the ridiculous stupidity of the performers in the goddamn company to do something like this to begin with. Especially on top of that, if we look at it strictly from a race issue, knowing you are a goddamn black man in the lion's den of WWE with a bunch of great whites, and all they're doing is going... <laughs> And they're doing everything they can to destroy you. Why would you give them any more ammunition than is absolutely possible? I'm not sitting here advocating to just get in where you fit in and kind of go along and say, yes, sir, no, sir, and all this shit. No, I'm not. But at some point in time, you've got to understand your circumstance and situation and not be such a fucking knucklehead. And for a college-educated, almost 40-year-old father to be doing stupid shit like this in a corporate environment is absolutely astounding to me. So while I think the suspension is stupid and it's an overreaction and it's ridiculously overboard, maybe it's needed and maybe it is justified. I personally wouldn't have done it. I would have either taken the approach of reaming the dude in the backstage area one-on-one, -on -one, or if I really needed to send a message, i call everybody into a meeting, and we're just going to have a come-to-Jesus moment, and that's it. But this whole thing of having to overcompensate, that's because you're doing a poor job of setting basic expectations at the beginning. This is Leadership 101. If you come in too soft, and you got to try and be hard later, you end up overcompensating, and you end up getting your people to tune you out even quicker. And they're less likely to do what you ultimately need and want them to do. You suspended a guy for 60 days for grabbing your arm. He literally would have been better, Titus O'Neil, to fucking smoke a bull, to smoke a blunt, 
How stupid is that? 